Venus, often dubbed Earth's sister planet because of its similar size and proximity to us, has always been somewhat overshadowed by our red neighbor Mars in the quest for extraterrestrial life. However, a recent discovery has cast a surprisingly bright spotlight onto this scorching cloud-covered world. For the longest time, Venus was dismissed as a possible haven for life, with surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead and an atmosphere thick with carbon dioxide and clouds of sulfuric acid, it seemed an unlikely place to find any signs of life. But the universe, as it often does, threw a curveball at us. In 2020, scientists made an announcement that caused quite a stir in the astronomical community. They had detected traces of a gas called phosphine in the clouds of Venus. Now, why was this discovery so groundbreaking? Phosphine is a molecule made up of phosphorus and hydrogen. On Earth, this gas is primarily associated with life, produced by bacteria living in oxygen-free environments. The clouds of Venus, where the phosphine was detected, have temperatures and pressures that are somewhat Earth-like compared to the planet's inhospitable surface. This led to the tantalizing possibility. Could there be life floating in the Venusian atmosphere? Before jumping to conclusions, researchers meticulously looked for other explanations. Volcanic activity, lightning, and even meteor impacts were considered as potential sources of the phosphine, Yet, none of these scenarios could produce the amount of phosphine that was observed. The instruments and methods used to detect the phosphine underwent rigorous scrutiny, with teams double-checking data and ensuring the signal was genuine. The presence of phosphine doesn't confirm life on Venus, but it does open the door to this exciting possibility. To find more answers, missions to Venus are now being considered with renewed interest. By sending probes to study its atmosphere directly or even to float in the clouds, Scientists hope to determine the origin of the phosphine and see if the thick, acidic clouds of our neighboring planet might indeed harbor some form of life. In the grand tapestry of space exploration, the phosphine discovery on Venus reminds us of an essential lesson. Sometimes the search for alien life may lead us in directions we never anticipated. Mars, our captivating neighbor, has always been at the center of mankind's fascination when pondering the existence of extraterrestrial life. With its haunting red landscapes and vast valleys, it's a planet that has inspired countless tales of Martians and space invasions. But recently, some real, tangible clues have emerged from this distant world that could hint at the existence of ancient life. The term organic might conjure up images of green foods or farming practices, but in the realm of chemistry, it simply refers to carbon-based molecules, which are life's building blocks. Such molecules are crucial because all known life forms on Earth are carbon-based. In 2018, the scientific community was abuzz with excitement when the Curiosity rover, NASA's mobile laboratory rolling across Mars, discovered organic molecules preserved in Martian rocks. These rocks, located in an area named Gale Crater, are estimated to be about 3.5 billion years old. This discovery means that at around the same time life was gaining a foothold on Earth, Mars had the ingredients necessary for life. What makes Gale Crater especially interesting is that it's believed to have once contained a lake. With the discovery of these organic molecules, one can't help but imagine a past Mars where water-filled lakes or oceans nurtured early forms of life. However, it's important to note that the presence of organic molecules doesn't directly point to life. Mars is a dynamic planet with a history of volcanic activity. These organic molecules could have been formed by non-biological processes or even delivered from outer space via meteorites. Despite the uncertainty, this discovery adds another layer to Mars's already complex and intriguing story. Scientists, with the help of rovers like Curiosity and Future Missions, continue to unravel the mysteries of the Red Planet. Each discovery, each hint of ancient water or molecule, draws us closer to answering that age-old question. Are we alone in the universe? For now, the presence of organic molecules on Mars stands as a testament to the planet's potential to have supported life. As we dive deeper into its secrets, who knows what other revelations await us? Far from the warmth of the sun in the chilling depths of our solar system lie two icy moons that, contrary to their frigid exteriors, might harbor the warmth of life deep within. Enceladus, a glistening moon of Saturn, and Europa, one of Jupiter's largest moons, are more than just frozen celestial bodies. They are worlds of intrigue and promise. At first glance, 
Enceladus might appear as just another ice-covered sphere, but it hides a dynamic secret beneath its surface. In 2005, the Cassini spacecraft, while exploring Saturn and its moons, witnessed stunning plumes of water vapor and ice particles erupting from the south pole of Enceladus. These geyser-like jets bursting forth into space indicated that beneath its icy shell, Enceladus might be hiding a vast subsurface ocean. Europa, with its cracked, ice-covered surface, tells a similar tale. Observations from various missions and telescopes have provided strong evidence that a massive subsurface ocean, potentially twice the volume of Earth's oceans, exists beneath Europa's icy crust. These observations, coupled with the Moon's induced magnetic field, suggest the presence of a salty, liquid water ocean. But why is the discovery of these oceans significant? Water, as we understand it, is a fundamental ingredient for life. On Earth, where there's water, there's often life. These hidden oceans on Enceladus and Europa offer the tantalizing possibility that, in their warm depths, microbial life or even more complex organisms could exist. It's incredible to imagine that in such extreme and distant environments, life might find a way. The potential existence of hydrothermal vents on the ocean floors of these moons further amplifies this possibility. On Earth, hydrothermal vents in our oceans' abyssal depths teem with life. These ecosystems thrive without sunlight, relying instead on the chemicals spewed out by the vents for energy. Could similar vents in the oceans of Enceladus or Europa be home to alien life forms? As technology advances, our gaze turns not just to the distant stars, but also to these icy worlds in our backyard. Future missions to these moons aim to study their oceans more closely, hunting for signs of life or the conditions that might support it. The discovery of these subsurface oceans has reshaped our understanding of where life might exist beyond Earth. It's a compelling reminder that sometimes the most exciting mysteries and potentials for discovery lie just beneath the surface. The TRAPPIST-1 system discovered in 2017 was a breakthrough in our quest to understand the universe and the possibility of life beyond Earth. Situated just 40 light years away from us, it's relatively close in astronomical terms. When you think of the vastness of space, 40 light years might seem enormous. But in the grand scale of the universe, this system is practically our neighbor. What makes TRAPPIST-1 truly special is the sheer number of Earth-sized planets it contains. Seven to be exact, these planets are not just any regular planets. They are remarkably similar in size to our own home Earth. This resemblance in size leads scientists to believe that these planets could potentially have similar conditions to Earth, which opens up the possibilities of them hosting life. The most intriguing aspect of these seven siblings is that three of them are comfortably nestled in what's known as the star's habitable zone. This is a region around a star where the conditions might just be right to support liquid water on the planet's surface. As we know, water is essential for life, at least life as we understand it. If there's liquid water, there might be an environment conducive to life. Furthermore, the star at the center of the TRAPPIST-1 system is a red dwarf. These types of stars are cooler and less luminous than our sun. Because of this, the habitable zone where temperatures could allow for liquid water is closer to the star. This means that the planets in this zone, with their potential watery reservoirs, are in close proximity to their parent star, making them tantalizing targets for future observations. There's a significant effort in the scientific community to study these planets in detail. Using advanced telescopes and observational techniques, researchers hope to decipher the atmospheres of these planets. If they can determine the composition of these atmospheres, they could look for signs of life, or at least conditions favorable for life. The TRAPPIST-1 system, with its Earth-like planets and potential for water, remains a beacon of hope in the search for extraterrestrial life. Deep in the cosmos, in the vast expanse of our universe, there lies a phenomenon that has both baffled and excited astronomers for years. Fast radio bursts, commonly abbreviated as FRBs. First discovered in 2007, these are intense, millisecond-long spikes of radio energy that seem to come from very, very far away and their origins remain one of the most captivating puzzles in modern astronomy. Imagine for a moment a lighthouse. It sends out a quick powerful beam of light that sweeps across the landscape and then disappears, only to repeat again after a while. FRBs are somewhat similar in nature. They are these extremely short-lived yet incredibly powerful bursts of radio waves that, when first detected, 
left many experts scratching their heads. The distance from which these FRBs are coming from is astounding. Through various observations and calculations, scientists have determined that many of these signals are originating from galaxies millions to billions of light years away. To put that into perspective, even the light from our closest neighboring galaxy, Andromeda, takes about 2.5 million years to reach us. That these brief signals from far-off galaxies manage to reach us is a testament to their immense energy and power. But what causes FRBs? That's where the plot thickens. There have been numerous theories. Some suggest that these could be the byproducts of massive cosmic events, like the collision of neutron stars or the eruption of supermassive black holes. Others even proposed more exotic theories, like signals sent by advanced alien civilizations trying to reach out to the cosmos. While the extraterrestrial hypothesis is undeniably thrilling, researchers tend to look for more conventional, natural explanations first. In recent times, some breakthroughs have been made. For instance, certain FRBs have been observed to repeat coming from the same location in the sky. This repeater behavior might provide clues about their origins. Are they from neutron stars in the throes of death? Or are they the result of some other high-energy astrophysical process? The hunt to uncover the mysteries of FRBs is ongoing, with newer telescopes and technologies paving the way for deeper insights. These enigmatic signals from the cosmos might not only teach us about the vast, intricate workings of the universe, but could also offer hints, no matter how subtle, about the possibility of life beyond our tiny blue planet.